Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements text training file, we're going to be looking at how to put a picture inside of text. You can see what I have here. Simple text. I've, of course, that a warp on this text. I'll show you how to do that. A little bit of a bevel and emboss on that. But the important part is you can see this picture inside of the text and that's taken from that picture right up here. The process is really very easy, very straightforward. We're simply going to be using the text as a clipping mask and then putting our pictures inside of that clipping mask. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll start this as a new project. First, I'm going to make a new file the exact same size as this file. Easy to do. Just do select all, edit, copy. What that does is it puts the size of the image into the clipboard. Now, when we go up here to File, New, we can do New Blank File, and one of our options is Clipboard right there. So, by doing that copy, that presets all of these settings to match that other file exactly. So choose OK and there we go. It's smaller because I'm just not zoomed in as much on this. So let's just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'll be using the menus as much as possible and in here instead of using keyboard shortcuts just so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. Okay, so here's our basic file. Now as you notice back there, you can kind of see there's the other file right there. The first thing we have is a gradient in the background. So let's go ahead and get that gradient put in there. I'm going to make this just a regular layer. So just double click where it says background. It'll say layer zero. Choose OK. That just converts it from a background layer to a standard layer. Let's now go over here and grab our gradient tool. Click on that to bring up our gradients and see right there, just the little top part of that showing, click on that. That's that purple to the orange gradient that I used in the background. It's just one of the default gradients that comes with Photoshop Elements. So there we go, there's our gradient. Now if you hold the Shift key down while you pull the gradient down, it will give you a perfectly vertical line. You see right there, it's not swinging back and forth unless I go all the way up to 45 degrees. So I can go you know, straight down or 45 to either side or straight across. So that locks in that line, make, giving you a perfectly straight line. That's Again, that's that holding on the Shift key to do that. So there we go. Just pull that down, and that gives us a perfect purple to orange background for putting our text onto it. All right, the next thing that we want, of course, is our text. We'll go over here to the Type tool. And just use, using the standard horizontal type tool, nothing special right there and then pick any big flat typeface. I'll just scroll down a little bit here. There's the one that I used. It's just real big and flat. Gil Sands Ultra Bold Regular. But really anything that has a lot of space inside of the letters will work. So you want a, a big black looking typeface. If I scroll down, you know, this will work okay as well. That one will work out fine. You can put images into these thinner typefaces, it just doesn't show up as well. So you want just these big fat typefaces. Anything which looks black like that looks real dark as you scroll down. Those are typefaces that will work out fine for this. You know, this will work out okay for instance as well. Okay, I'll scroll back up and grab that one that I used previously. There we go. Color is set at white. It doesn't matter what the color is set at. You know, so whatever you feel like. And let's just type in sunset. There we go. You can make it upper, lowercase, whatever you feel like. There's our sunset text. 
Now yeah, let's just resize this a bit. I'm just trying to get it as large as I can so I have some space in here to work with the text. There we go. Now to make it look more interesting, let's go ahead and warp the text. You can do that. Let's make it so you can see that bottom panel. There we go. Make sure you're back on your type tool. Click inside your type, and there's the icon you want right there. That T with the little curved thing underneath. Click on that, and that brings up the warp text dialog box. Okay, I can now move my text back over here so you can see that. There's the warp text. Lots of interesting warps in here. We have an arc like that, and you can adjust the amount of warp with these slider controls. You can go, you know, warp it up, you can warp it down. All kinds of things. You can do a vertical warp or a horizontal warp, whatever you like. You also can adjust the distortion in here. That's a horizontal distortion. Here's a vertical distortion. There we go. And there are a lot of these as well. We have that one. There's an arc lower, mostly bends the bottom. Arc upper, mostly bends the top. Arch bends everything equally. Bulge, you know, bends both the top and the bottom away from each other. You can see that right there. So there are a bunch of these. Here's a kind of a, a flag wave thing. We'll just use the standard arc on this and then let's put in a bit of a distortion. I think I'll do it this way this time. There we go. But you also can do vertical as well as horizontal. So you can actually distort both directions if you want to. We'll just do it like that. Let's go back to our move tool. Let's make this easy. Go up here to the edit or image rather and transform and then free transform. There we can now see our control handles. And I can now grab those out there. So I'm using the free transform this time to resize this and I'll rotate that around a bit. Just something kind of like that. So I have just some interesting directions going on there. So you can pull it open so you can see that corner. There's our corner. Okay, something along those lines, that's fine. And again, the one I just used there to make this easy was the image transform and free transform option right there. All right, so that gets our text in place. Now we need to put a bevel and emboss on this, which is you know real straightforward. Go up here to layer and layer style, style settings and click on bevel, that's right there. Once you're here, you can adjust the amount of bevel that you want. Just give it a little bit of a, a bevel there so you have some edge showing me, so look a little more interesting. Choose OK. There it is. Now, let's put our pictures into this. Come back here, bring up our photo bin. There we go. Bring this picture up. Over here where it says background, I'm just going to drag it down onto this like that. There we go. And I can close that now. And I'll double click on this one, bring this picture up to the same thing. Just going to drag that down into our picture and close that down. Okay, so now I have both of those inside of our picture. Now you can change the size if you want to on these or leave them as is. I'm going to resize this one a bit. I'll just grab the corner here. And let's just bring the size down so it's just about the right size for our picture. Let it snap into the corners like that and then I'll bring over to the side. Alright, that's, that's that one. Let's come down to this one, same thing. I'll just find where those corners are. And let's just bring this down and fit it to the size of our page. There we go. That's just to have a couple of these to work with. Now, to use a clipping mask, what you want to have is you want to have what you're clipping into 
right here. This needs to be a shape or text. You can clip into text as well. And then put your image above that right here. So the there's our text and images above the text. Click on your image layer like we have here. Go up to layer and come down to create clipping mask. There it is. Click on that and notice what happens. This moves to the side a little ways and then it puts the image inside of your text just like that. The reason I have two of these up here, I wanted to show you this. I'll click on the second one. Layer. Create clipping mask. Notice how it does the same thing. But we're only seeing the top one. I'm not seeing the bottom one at all. So we're not getting any bleed through on these. But you can have multiple stacked up and it clips into whatever it, you're using as your clipping mask. I can then, you know, cycle between those just by clicking on that little hide or show icon there. If you want to, you can blend these together using your different blending modes. Let's just see if we can get anything. I'll, I'll use the the wheel on my mouse. I'll just kind of roll through these. Now what I'm doing is I'm blending the top picture into the bottom picture and seeing if anything looks interesting. White is not too bad. It goes well with the background. Scroll down. Might be some something else. That's kind of interesting. Pretty bright. Keep on scrolling down a little bit. Vivid is kind of, again, interesting. So in this case, I'm just, again, just blending the two sunset pictures together to see what I come up with. I kind of like that one. That's an overlay. So we get blending of those two together. But there you go. That is the basics. Now we can still work with our text. I can still change the text if I want to. For instance, if I want to move the text around, I'm up on this layer right now. You, see, you can actually move the layer inside of the image up there. So you can really you know, move your layer around. That's fine. Come down here and you can adjust the text. Let's do a free transform on the text. I'll pull this open so we can see our transform handles. There we go. Notice how I'll do it real slow how if you move the text around the picture stays put and the text just moves around but the picture is still showing through so you're actually using the text kind of like a window and you're seeing that image inside of the text but the image is, is staying in one place so if you move the text you move the text you don't move the image if you want to move the image around then just go on one of the image layers just keep that there we are Go into an image layer and you can then move the image around. For instance, I can rotate that image. You can see how that rotation happens. Let me just hide this one. Then we'll cancel that for a second. Let's hide that. And work just on this one layer here so you can see this. You can see there, if I move the image around on the image layer, the image moves, but the text stays put. So you can work with these independently, but still keep that relationship together where they're locked together as a clipping mask. So there we go. That's how you do these different clipping masks. Okay, just a couple of additional thoughts on this to kind of finish off our discussion. Well, we're already seeing how we can come back in and you know, move things around. I could change the warp on this if I wanted to. That's still available to me because it's still a text layer and I still have the warp here. I can change my effects. I should just double click on the little FX there. It brings back up the effects. And we can add in additional effects as well. Here's an outer glow for instance. So all of the effects still work. All that's still good. And the picture still stays contained inside. Let's do a little, little drop shadow here. So there's a drop shadow. Or apply a stroke. There you go, see that stroke on there. So all that stuff still works independently of the image inside. And you can change images just by choosing different images. I'm going to put that back to normal. There we go. So you can have different images and switch around. So complete control and freedom 
with using these as clipping mask or actually using the text as a clipping mask and showing anything above that into your clipping mask. So there you go. That's how you put a picture inside of text. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.